I came first to, uh, I think I just did one thing, and I, I, I interviewed Sissy Spacek and Jack Fisk. And I saw Sissy again recently at an Academy screening. I did the Q&A for an Academy screening for The Old Man and the Gun. And, uh, and I reminded her about that uh, conversation in Charlottesville. And uh, it clearly made quite an impression on her. She had no recollection whatsoever. But I, but I remember. <laughs> She was very kind, but it was clearly that, and it was like, an, it, but it was really nice. It was an hour long conversation. And, uh, you know, when I do so many conversations in, in, in Hollywood, and, you know, in Los Angeles, and uh, I don't know, it was just different. Everything felt different to have this sort of conversation here, uh, you know, with these big stars. I mean, with a big, you know, with, a, with an Oscar winner who uh, has, removed herself from that life. It just, it, there's a, it was a different tone to it. I remember uh, that conversation incredibly fondly. Peter Bogdanovich doesn't just speak thoughtfully about directors like, uh, like Wells, who he knew so well, and John Ford, who he knew so well, and, uh, and Howard Hawks. He, I, I mean, I guess he knows he does it, but Hitchcock too. He, um, he, he embodies them and he starts to imitate them. Right, which is just fantastic. So when he starts to tell a Hitchcock, Cary Grant story, he starts to sound like Hitchcock. But when he, he definitely does John Ford, um, and he's not, you know, he, he he's not kidding. It's just him telling the story. And he so uh, I, I just feel like Peter. I, I think Peter is a, a you know, at where I work at Turner Classic Movies, I feel like Peter Bogdanovich is a vastly underutilized resource because he doesn't just have the knowledge about these guys. He did, you know, he did when he was a, a journalist prior to becoming a director. He did intense, long, thoughtful interviews with these guys. Um, but he really, he's almost their voice from beyond the grave. I mean, you get a sense a little bit when you're talking to Peter Bogdanovich about Howard Hawks or Orson Welles that you were talking a little bit to Hawks or Welles. I, I still think that, uh, you know, there's still nothing better. It, it, look, I, it's always funny when I answer a question about the, the, the value of seeing a movie and a communal experience in a theater, because I work for a place where we want you to sit on your sofa and watch the movie, either by yourself or with one other person, right? But we get at TCM that there is huge value in seeing these movies uh, in a space, in a community. I mean, what we're trying to foster at TCM is a community of film lovers. So. Part of what we've realized is that is that is that maximizing what we get, what that community gets from us, is to create places where they can come together, and that's what we've done successfully over the, with the festival, with the crews, with our uh, fan club, the back lot. Um, so it, it, these festivals mean everything. I mean, you know, and and there's value, especially a place like this, where there is such a sense of community. I mean, nobody. I don't suspect there is one person who is from Charlottesville, Virginia, who, when someone asks them where they're from, they say Virginia, they say Charlottesville, right? So this is a this is a place that matters to people. You know, I badly, throughout my whole life, want to wanted to be from a place that mattered, to be part of a community uh, that mattered. Um, you know. Uh, so I, 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 I see huge value in that, particularly in a, in a place like this. <laughs>